Thank you so much for tuning into Carol's Daily Sauce. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You guys, with so much going on, oh, also share this video out because I think it'll be very, very helpful to a lot of people. <coughs> Excuse me. With so much going on with YouTube and the changes that are taking effect, some of them have already took effect immediately. Some of them are forthcoming. December and in January 2020. A lot of these rules and regulations and things that YouTube are passing on to the content creators is in compliance with what is called COPPA. And what COPPA stands for, COPPA is just an acronym. The acronym is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. I do want to say, no matter what state, no matter what country you live in, there is some form of a COPPA. There is some form of Children's Online Privacy Protection Act that is in place for the protection of children. To make a long story short, as YouTube content creators, we need to be in compliance of all of these new rules, in compliance of all of the regulations. Now, a lot of you are probably already aware of the fact, especially if you have uploaded a video within the last week, you probably have already experienced once you are trying to upload the video, you get to a certain section and there is a question asking you if your video is made for viewing by children. Is your video made for children? I don't know the exact uh, verbatim, but basically what it is asking is, is the video that you are about to upload, excuse me, intentionally made for children if it has any type of, I mean, you guys, this video will probably be longer than 15 minutes because I am going to try to break it down to you pretty much in layman's terms so that you can understand it. The bottom line is as content creators. So this is not something I believe that a lot of people who don't have a YouTube channel would even be interested in. Do have a YouTube channel. Listen up. Okay. What this means is that you need to tell YouTube whether the videos that you have uploaded and even your older videos were made or are being made with the intention of being basically viewed or viewable by children. Basically, are your videos made for children or not, but it's deeper than that. What YouTube plans on doing is using machines and these machines that they will be using will be able to tell them about specific content for children. The machine that they are going to use, I believe is going to be a machine that will be able to separate the adult content from the children content. One way we have in this process is making sure that when we upload videos and the videos that we have uploaded in the past, making sure that they are able to be viewable by children. But the key is this, we must not rely only on YouTube machines, because everybody knows that machines are not perfect, that they make mistakes. So we, as content creators, as YouTubers, need to be prepared to do our own audience setting. So what does that mean? What does that mean for me to do my own audience setting? I thought you'd never ask. YouTube, in a majority of cases, will rely on you. They will rely on us. They will rely on us to set the setting as to whether 
our content is suitable to be viewed by children. Now, a lot of people may be asking, asking what is the age that they're talking about? It's kind of ass. We'll get to that later on in the video. There are two ways that you can set your audience for your YouTube channel. The first way, which I believe is the easiest way, is to set it at the channel level. If you know for a fact that your videos are all reaction videos, you have makeup videos, maybe you have videos where there is a live reaction of what someone else did and say for instance a person is using foul language say for instance and when i say foul language i mean cursing say for instance a person is dancing in a way that is not go ahead is dancing in the way that's not something that children need to be viewing so what you can do, what you can do is if you wish to set your audience at the channel level is you would go into your YouTube. You would open up your YouTube studio. In the YouTube studio, you would go to settings, then you would go to channel, and then you would go to advanced setting. From advanced setting, you are able to choose the audience that best describes the audience that you are trying to appeal to. Setting this this way as a channel, overall channel audience, means that it will apply to all of your videos, every last one of them, all of your older ones, all of the new ones that come about, and what happens is it just automatically does that. So if you're someone who does not, like for me, for instance, there is not a video that I have out of over 300 videos that is, in my opinion, appealable to children. I, I just don't think so. There, are, That is something that a child would be interested in seeing. Any type of children's fictional character, anything, birthdays, celebrations, opening up Christmas presents, and you have these characters, you need to set those videos at viewing for children. Because if you don't, it could cause a lot of problems for you. If you want to set those videos at the video level, what you would do is go into your YouTube studio, click on video, select each and every video that you'd like to edit individually. There's an audience tab and on the audience tab, select each and every one. Because I mean, clearly there could be a video that you would like to set at a child's level. For instance, I have a video that's coming out. I actually was going to take pictures of a actual doll and put the doll on my video. I'm not gonna do that now. I was gonna do that, but I'm not gonna do that now because it's a catch 22. This is one of my news stories and I don't wanna give out too much information because then I tell about that video, but if, I were to use the video character, the character for that child who I'm doing the, the news story on, which I don't say her name or anything. I, I'm not gonna show her pictures. I don't do any of that when it comes to children. I'm just trying to be safe and trying to convey the message to everyone else that is a YouTube content creator. But at the video level, what you can do is every single time you upload a video, you need to make sure that you are setting the audience because if you don't do it at the channel level, I did mine as a channel level, so that every time I upload a video, I won't have to answer that question. The problem is if I were to set it at the channel level and then once I set it at the channel level, I submit my video that I have that will be uploading to show later on in the week and I have a picture of a doll on there, there is a good possibility that YouTube's machines 
can find the picture. This is just an example, y'all, that YouTube's machines can find the picture and say, this is a video that is geared for a child and it should be set as, and you don't want YouTube to have to set your video settings. There's a good possibility that you or I could set our videos as being viewable only to adults and then YouTube can change them. You just have to be very, very, very wise in it. My suggestion would be you doing just like I did. Go to YouTube Help. YouTube Help will tell you everything. It'll tell you everything. That's how I know about this. I have literally been watching every single video on COPPA. Every single one on COPPA. Quick story, really, really quick. I just made my thousand subscribers. I also made my watch time. So obviously when you make that, you can make the decision as to whether or not you want to be monetized. When I went to go and try to do that, I got some copy, some copyright notices. This is a learning experience for a lot of people. I got some copyright notices. Now, some of, I only got like three. Some of the copyright notices that I got, and they weren't bad. It wasn't, they weren't, um, they weren't warnings at all. They were just informing me that this song that you used, the composer or the person that owns the song wants to, wants to have shared monetization with you because you're using that song. Um, you can choose whether or not to monetize it. You, you know, individually, each and every video that you have, you can choose whether or not to monetize those videos. But in the area of copywriting, just be very careful that when you are filming, when you are, put up some groceries, but back to the COPA compliance, or COPA, 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 C-O-P-P-A, as I was saying before we got off, before I got off, it's very important that you set your audience settings accurately. As I said, YouTube will be implementing a actual, I hate to glasses look, will be implement, implementing, YouTube will be implementing an actual robot to go through to check and make sure settings are set accurately. What they're doing is protecting the children. They're making sure that children that are under age are not able to see things that they shouldn't see. Fines can be assessed if children end up seeing things that they aren't supposed to see. So YouTube is not my sole source of income. It will never be my sole source of income. I have an income. So like I always tell you guys, I'm gonna eat whether I have YouTube or not. But for those people where YouTube is their sole source of income and there's nothing wrong with it, you just need to be mindful about what it is you can upload, what it is that you shouldn't upload, and when in doubt, Google it, search it out, go to YouTube help, find out what it is. Don't go in groups asking people, can I play this music for 30 seconds? go to YouTube help because at least if you go to YouTube help, you can always link it and say where you found it. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.